Hello and welcome to another edition of Wealth Week. Can I start with a question? How do you define wealth in 2023? I suspect if you ask the man in the street, a lot of them would think in terms of Rolls Royces and private jets and super yachts. I do not think that those are the real symbols of wealth for us today. The first thing that obviously is critical is our health, and we, we need to look after ourselves if we're going to have an enjoyable life. But to me, the most important aspect of wealth in the 2020s is freedom. It's liberty. It's having choices. And the reason I say that is because I think our freedoms are being removed at an incredibly fast pace, and I see so little pushback against them. The pandemic obviously gave an enormous boost to the authoritarian instincts of our politicians. But what really uh, scares me now is how more and more new laws are coming in, things that are going to restrict our freedoms, the 15 minute cities they're talking about that some people are referring to as concentration camps, uh, you know, limits on how far we can travel, even in places like uh, Leafield, Oxford, they're talking about having zones and takes you back to Berlin in the 1960s. So to me, there has never been a more important time to have a plan B. And by that, I mean, like the good old Stevie Wonder song went, if you had my kind of cash, you'd have more than one place to go. I think it's never been more important to have a second country of residence, or even a second citizenship, a second passport. So that if really, you know, the solids hit the fans in the country where you are at the moment, or if life simply becomes too unbearably authoritarian, you've got somewhere else to go. And the interesting thing is, there are lots of choices, but the choices are changing all the time. And you really need expert help to stay on top of this. So what I want to do in this week's episode is to talk you through some information from Henley and Partners, who are the world's leading experts on second residency and citizenship. We've just partnered with them within Beaufort Private Equity for the benefit of our members so that they can have initial consultations to talk about what their choices might be. So what I want to do today is take you through two charts they've come up with. One is the countries where you've got the best chances for getting a second residency, and the other is all about a second citizenship. So let me just share my screen and we can have a look at exactly what I'm talking about. So here we are looking at uh, one of Henley and Partners tables. These are their top uh, residency options for 2023. And if you look down the left-hand side here, you'll see the kind of factors that they use. They use the, the country's reputation. Is it a, an okay tier one kind of place or is it some dodgy little backwoods that you wouldn't really feel safe walking down the street at night? What's the quality of life like? What's it like for tax benefits? And how about things like visa-free access on arrival? How long will it take to process your application? How tightly do you have to comply with all their rules? What are the investment requirements? A key question in the total overall costs. How long does it take to get citizenship? And what are the requirements for citizenship? So obviously, residency is something that can lead to citizenship. The two are not necessarily linked, but it's certainly a, a path that you can go down by starting with residency residency, and then after a few years, uh, applying for citizenship. So interesting that the number one choice on their list for residency is the place where I'm recording this, where I now live, Portugal. And what you'll see is, as, as you scan across the page, you get a, a reputation score. This is eight out of 10. You get a quality of life score. I would make that 11 out of 10 myself, uh, just like the sunshine. Uh, tax, there's a very favorable uh, non-habitual residence tax scheme here. And then you start looking at some of the other things. They get 10 out of 10 for visa-free access on arrival. Uh, six out of 10 for processing time. Portuguese bureaucracy is not the greatest. Compliance, uh, six out of 10 investment requirements seven but um it's interesting because you know the the when we come to talk about residency for example uh, citizenship for example um portugal has just 
basically abandoned its golden visa program. It made some changes a year ago. It uh, basically stopped you buying in the most uh, desirable areas like the Algarve. Um, and then you could you could just buy tourist properties. Now that looks like they're going to cancel it altogether later in 2023. Uh, Greece, for example, has just changed its requirements and doubled the amount in certain parts of the country. So it's a constantly moving feast. Now, Henley and partners tell me that they are actually talking to 70 different countries at the moment about either new or improved residency and citizenship schemes. So there is going to be choice, but those choices change all the time. And this is a really bespoke uh, process because who you are, where you are, what your uh, ancestors were, what your ethnic background is, what your religious background is, all of these things can actually impact what your choices are for where you can go and live and where you can get citizenship. So you really do need expert help with this. And uh, that's a, a blatant plug for Henley. There's, there's sometimes you've just got to pay the fees and get on with it if you're serious about this stuff. So Portugal is in first place. Interestingly, Austria is in second place. Um, and obviously, if you were a um, previously a British EU citizen, if you were a Remainer and you're really upset that you're no longer part of the EU, then when we come to the citizenship side of this, you can look at this as a possible route back into the EU. And I have to say, Austria comes out very highly for residency uh, and for citizenship, but it's a very, very expensive process. So you'll, you'll need multiple millions if you want to buy your way into Austrian citizenship. For myself, having seen how they treated their citizens during the pandemic, I wouldn't go there with a 10 foot barge pole, but obviously that is up to you as an individual. Uh, Greece, again, obviously very welcoming of, of new residents after all their issues over the last 15 years, they need all the financial help they can get. So they are welcoming you with open arms. Uh, Italy even has a, an interesting program for residency and Switzerland there joint third with Greece and Italy. And of course, if you're uh, from overseas, the UK features in fourth place. That's really about sixth or seventh, isn't it? By the time you add all those up. And then you've got places like Canada again. If you want to live under the great dictator Trudeau, that's up to you. Again, my 10 foot barge pole would be coming to the fore when I look at Canada. And then you get into more niche choices like Latvia, Luxembourg, Malta, which you'll see again when we talk about uh, citizenship. Uh, Spain is there, Australia, Singapore, Cyprus, Ireland, Jersey, Panama, Central America now, the UAE, the U United States of America, uh, New Zealand again, you know, like Australia, very, very t uh, bad treatment of its citizens during the pandemic. So big yellow flag warning for uh, anyone that fancies going there. Uh, Hong Kong, again, <laughs> the 20 foot barge pole for Hong Kong with the way uh, that nice President Xi is uh, treating uh, Hong Kong people. Uh, it's fine as long as you don't protest and you uh, disappear into the Chinese prison system. Uh, South Korea, Mauritius, quite an interesting place. Uh, Monaco, if you've got the money for Monaco, um, you can't get citizenship in Monaco, by the way. You can only get residency. Um, and that comes with all kinds of, uh, uh, shall we say, a criteria to make sure you're the right stuff. So you start by opening a bank account, minimum 500,000 euros, more often a million. Uh, you have to rent a place for a year or buy a place. And, you know, you're looking at two and a half million euros for the smallest studio, five to 10 million will get you an OK apartment, uh, 20 million plus will get you a very nice apartment. Uh, but if Monaco works for you, then it tends to really work for you because of the tax position there. And of course, it's a great location. It's only a couple of hours from anywhere in Europe. So these are the top countries in terms of residency. Now, let me just uh, move along here to uh citizenship. So there's little old Malta, the island of Malta coming out in first place for citizenship. And there's Austria. Uh, I met recently with the, the head of uh, Henley's London office, uh, and he very much 
positioned Austria as the kind of gold standard for citizenship, um, leaving aside my own concerns about the, the way that their country was led during the pandemic, which I think is one of the more revealing aspects, if you like, of uh, a national identity. Um, but it was uh, uh, because of the, the access you get, the quality of the passport, the number of countries you can visit and so on, um, it is uh, for their, by their definition, the gold standard. But I think the sort of figure he told me, and you know, don't hold me to this, this was a, a, a brief conversation at our recent live event, was something like 6 million euros or 6 million sterling if you want Austrian citizenship. Um, Malta comes in a bit more reasonably. I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. In third place, there's Montenegro. Now, they've blown hot and cold on this. I, I had Montenegrin residency back in 2018 when it looked like there was a serious prospect of a Jeremy Corbyn-led Marxist government in the UK. Um, I bought property in um, Tivat in Montenegro on the Adriatic coast. It's a, it's a beautiful country. Um, and that got me residency. So I was a resident there. And of course, Boris then went and surprised us all by winning the 2019 election. But one of the things that I always emphasize with these kinds of decisions and having these kind of options is that it's far better to be a year early than a day late. Because, you know, once these uh, governments change, once they can change tax systems at the stroke of a pen or change capital controls or residency requirements, you are vulnerable. So, you know, you need to get your retaliation in first and have somewhere else to go. Uh, Montenegro had uh, 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 launched a, a citizenship by investment program. It had not worked very well. I think in 18 months, they've had about 30 successful applications. They've modified that now. They've changed it. Um, and so they get a very good score from Henley. Reputationally, it's six because obviously you've got all the history from back to communist Yugoslavia days. There's also been uh, big battles between church and state in Montenegro, uh, has been some political instability. So you've got a, a lowish score on reputation, but great score for quality of life. It's a beautiful location. You've got uh, uh, big national parks there. You've got the coastal resorts like Kotor and Tivat. You've got skiing in the north of the country. It's a really good lifestyle there. Um, okay, score for visa access. Processing time, not too bad. Uh, compliance, again, not too bad. Investment, uh, okay. Uh, residency requirements gets 10 out of 10. So, um, you know, th these are the kind of top three, each with their own costs and, and benefits. Then you get into what's often been the most popular category of second residency, which is in the Caribbean. So you've got Grenada, St. Lucia, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, Dominica. These tend to be in the sort of hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollar range. It's the cheapest way of having a second passport. Um, not sure how many people actually ever end up going to live in these places, um, but they have fairly limited uh, requirements to turn up there. But if you just simply want to buy residence and citizenship of a second country, then the Caribbean is the long established and favored choice. And then you get into places like Turkey. Now, <laughs> Turkey, I think, is, is just behind Argentina on inflation at the moment. I think Turkey's at 80%. Argentina just made triple figures to 100% inflation in the last 12 months. Um, that makes the 15 to 20% inflation that we're really experiencing in, in, in the UK uh, a bit more palatable, perhaps. Um, officially, obviously, the figures are more like half of that, but we all know our weekly grocery and energy bills have gone up at least least double. So uh, overall, it's much more like 20% plus. And Turkey, well, you know, that nice Mr. Erdogan and his mate Vladimir Putin, if you really want to go and live there, that's your choice. Um, and ditto, I would say Egypt, not exactly a hotbed of Western democracy. Um, but, you know, again, they do have a scheme. They're desperate for cash. Their currency is in the toilet. And uh, they probably would welcome you if you were mad enough to go there. And, and some other fairly unpleasant looking choices towards the bottom of that list. So one of the interesting things that these guys tell me is that nine out of 10 of their clients who go right the way through the process of getting residency or citizenship do not actually go there. 
they don't actually move or relocate. They just want it as an insurance policy. They just want it as a, effectively another asset in their portfolio. And that's how they treat these things. And that's how I think you should treat these things. It's every bit as important as bricks and mortar, gold, stocks and shares, bonds, loan notes. All those things are assets, but so is residency and citizenship. And having choices of where you go is, I think, going to be increasingly important as countries get more and more authoritarian during the 2020s. And I see so little pushback. The middle classes are being slaughtered at the moment. There's record high inflation, taxes as high as they've been since World War II, more and more planned restrictions on your freedom, the way the banks are behaving at the moment. My goodness, they're treating every single customer like a criminal in waiting. Uh, you try transferring uh, amounts of cash. You try having payments come in from abroad. Um, you know, you get your banking facilities closed down at short notice. Uh, the way the high street banks are going, they deserve to die. So I'm delighted to see some banks are dying. Hopefully many more will. It'll teach them a lesson. The buggers deserve it the way they treat you and I, their customers. I digress. Let's just have a look at um, one country in a bit more detail. So here's Malta, the number one choice of Henley and Partners for uh, citizenship and quite high up on the residency stakes as well. So um, this is obviously an island in the Mediterranean. So it's got an excellent climate, friendly people, low crime rate, super quality of life. Um, and it's also very easily accessible by air. Um, so if we look at citizenship by uh, investment, you're talking about 738,000 euros for a residency period of 36 months uh, to qualify for citizenship, or you can pay more, 888,000 to qualify within 12 months. So again, you've got options there. If you wanted the fastest route to citizenship, you can pay effectively a, an express fee of another what, 150,000 euros to, to jump the queue and get residency uh, within uh, 12, uh, citizenship, sorry, within 12 months. Um, I'm not the expert here, so don't take everything I say uh, as gospel. You need to talk to these guys if you want to um, really go into this in more detail. Uh, but essentially, what you'll see here is um, all the benefits, the visa-free access, uh, a, a very transparent and reputable financial sector. Uh, a lot of international business is done through Malta. It's also become a, a real kind of a hub for crypto activities if you're into the crypto currency world at all. But they do have very strict due diligence standards. So you know, there's no kind of getting away with some dodgy paperwork here. You're going to have to have absolutely everything uh, tickety-boo and lined up to, to get all your paperwork and, and follow all the procedures to the letter if you want successful citizenship of Malta. So here are all the details and the qualifiers. I, I won't go through all of the text with you, um, but the point is each country is different. Each country's requirements are different. And what you'll find is these guys will guide you through that. They'll talk about your choices. And then uh, if you want to go ahead, they'll kick off the whole process for you and manage it end to end. So um, my point really is that, that um, you know, if you're watching this, you're probably somebody who's already highly astute financially. You may well have been very successful in your business or career. Um, and I think one of the things that's going to really matter in the 2020s for you and your, your family, your children, your children's children, are the choices you make around residency and citizenship. And we all have a, a certain uh, cultural affinity to the place we were born and raised in. But the question I think you need to ask yourself is, is that still the best place for me and my family and the next two or three generations because of what's happening in the world? Are we going to have freedom of movement? Are we going to be able to enjoy uh, a nice lifestyle? Are we going to be restricted in our travel, restricted in our where we can even drive our cars? Do we want to live in a country that where freedom is given a somewhat higher priority? Um, only you can answer these questions. My point is, are you even asking them? So many people that I meet are kind of in a complacent denial that because things have been okay for the last 50 years, they're gonna be okay for the next 50 years. I don't think they are. 
if you look at the post-war period of 80 years that we've been through, it is unprecedented in all recorded history. We've had nearly 80 years of peace, 80 years of increasing prosperity, improving health care and life expectancy, and for most of us, the chance to do interesting, enjoyable work. And the question is, how long will that go on? So my uh, question I want to leave you with today is very much, um, you know, where is your plan B? What is your choice? And, you know, have a think about it. Have a look at the uh, Henley websites. I'll put the links in the uh, description underneath. Take a look and see what you think. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.